1778, uh, the second full year of the American Revolution, British policymakers decided to shift their focus from the Northeast to the South. They wanted to take advantage of the large number of British loyalists that resided here. Well, on December 29th, 1778, that shift in focus would begin here in Savannah, Georgia. Now, Savannah obviously was a very important city to the American war effort. And in October of 1779, the following year after England took Savannah, uh, the Americans were determined to take it back. And this is the location of one of the bloodiest battles during the American Revolution. Over 800 American and French soldiers would fall in this land just behind me. This is the Savannah History Museum and the Visitor Center. And over there is the Savannah Railway Museum. And this is the uh, little park in between both of them. Now, just to kind of give you a quick layout of the land, uh, here's uh, memorial markers. And that is the original Spring Hill Redoubt, or what is left of it. And check this guy out. This is uh, a recreation of what the Spring Hill Redoubt may have looked like. So uh, let's go check these things out. Now on December 29th, 1778, the British would land northeast of where I am today and they would easily take Savannah from the American forces that were stationed here. And much like many of the cities along waterways, they were vital to the uh, success of that region and the Americans were determined to take it back. Um, so in the fall of 1779, the Americans would gather a force between five to 7,000 men, and they were based in Charleston, South Carolina, under the command of General Benjamin Lincoln. Now, Lincoln was not alone in uh, his attempts to retake Savannah. He learned that the French have also assembled a fleet of warships and over 4,000 French soldiers. So, the Americans and French forces combined were almost 10,000 strong to take this city back. And just kind of showing you uh, the British defense network, of Savannah. Uh, right now we're here. This is the Spring Hill Redoubt and this is showing where the French and Americans would come through the swamps and try to attack this redoubt. And you can see the rest of the British defenses along with the uh, outskirts of the city of Savannah. And this is where we are today. Now the Americans would launch their assault on October 9th, 1779 and Savannah would actually be one of the bloodiest battles during the American Revolution. Now, the Americans and French forces would suffer almost a thousand casualties, while the British barely suffered a hundred. And the worst of the fighting would take place right here. So this is what's left of the Spring Hill Redoubt. Now this is uh, the site of some of the worst fighting, uh, obviously of this battle, but in the entire American Revolution. Again, almost a thousand French and American forces would be killed or wounded here and the British would suffer barely 100 casualties. I believe they had 40 killed and 60 wounded. But uh, yeah, this is the Spring Hill Redoubt. Now the Americans and French chose to attack this uh, specific redoubt because they believe that only a handful of militia and ill-trained uh, regulars were uh, manning this position. Well, in fact, some of uh, England's best trained troops were actually manning this position, including the Highlanders, who were fierce soldiers from Scotland. And let's see if we can see the sign here. I don't know if you can read this, but upon this spot stood the Spring Hill Redoubt. Here on October 9th, 1779, one of the bloodiest engagements of the whole revolution was fought. When repeated assaults were made by the Allied troops of Georgia, South Carolina, and France in an effort to retake Savannah from the British. This is a really cool thing to see. Again, this is what's left of the original Spring Hill Redoubt. And as you saw by that sign, thousands of American and French soldiers would be charging across these fields here. Now from the beginning, this attack appeared to be doomed. Now obviously you can see the city and modern day structures here, but during this time a lot of it would have been swampland, marshes, things like that. Well on the morning of the attack, the effort was uh, thwarted by the uh, terrain and apparently a heavy fog rolled in, which delayed the attack and gave 
the uh, defenders here plenty of notice and uh, plenty of visibility. Instead of attacking uh, early in the morning, they were attacking midday and the element of surprise was lost, which was probably a contributing factor to uh, why so many Allied soldiers would be killed here. Now unfortunately for the Americans and the French, this British victory rekindled England's spirit for the war, in part because uh, the victory defeated troops of the regular army of France, which is the first time that uh, French soldiers would be engaged in combat during the American Revolution. But uh, here's a couple other little tidbits. Uh, this one here jumped out to me. Polish nobleman Kazimierz Pulaski, who held a brigadier general's commission from the Congress, he commanded the American cavalry and he lost his life from a wound he received in battle. Now something that's also interesting is the largest unit of black soldiers to fight in the American Revolution fought here. And they were volunteers from Haiti. And many of them would actually go on to fight for their own independence against France. Now something else that's super neat is these stones in the center. There's 800 of them before us and they have three meanings. They represent the approximate number of soldiers killed or wounded in the Battle of Savannah on the morning of October 9th, 1779. And they're arranged as a column with 10 soldiers across. The French and American allies moved five such columns of men to attack the uh, fortified British. So this would be, this is also simulating a column of men. And uh, inscribed in the stones are names and stories of people throughout the entire revolutionary struggle for all the states, countries, and cultures involved. Wow, that's a neat tribute. And you can see in the distance the recreation of uh, the Spring Hill Redoubt. And right here is what is left of the Spring Hill Redoubt. And I believe the British had almost 14 of these redoubts uh, around the city as part of their defense network. So. The uh, defenses here were pretty stout, and again, like we touched on, we had the Highlanders, British regulars, Hessians, also provincial militia, loyalist militia, and I believe uh, a few slaves and Cherokee Indians. Just giving you a closer look at some of the stones here, and you can see some have uh, names with information about that certain person. But I wanted to point out this one because Brigadier General Francis Marion actually fought here. He commanded the South Carolina Regiment, the 2nd South Carolina Regiment, who fought here. And uh, he would also gain the name Swamp Fox because uh, he would lead daring raids challenging British control of South Carolina. Starting at 4 a.m., the first battle cry of the Americans shall be Congress in Liberty. Because we're not fighting for a king, we're not fighting to have one either. We say if this thing all works out, we will elect people into those positions to make those old kingly decisions. And if they don't do what we elected them to do, if they don't live up to their promises, what can we do to them? We can kick them out. This is the idea. So that's why our battle cry is Congress and Liberty. So, if you are French, however, you align with the French as well, their battle cry is Vive le Roi, which means long live the king. Open up your cartridge box and take out one paper cartridge, as I mentioned earlier, has our gunpowder and shot, that large 75 caliber, three quarters of an inch large, round lead ball. However, we must open this quickly and easily with one hand. What's the best way to do that? To serve in this army, you must have at least two good teeth in the top and bottom of your head. They must match and they must be yours. The next command, or part of that command, shall be, bring it to your teeth, tear it open and spit it out in the face of the enemy to insult them. Now you have an open cartridge of powder. Prime! Pour a bit of gunpowder in the pan and shut pan. Cast it about to your side. Charge with cartridge. Pour the gunpowder down and start the ball with your thumb. Draw your rammer. Relax. I must just get very rusty out here. Ram down cartridge. Turn your rammer. Shoulder. That's every single step that we need to load and fire one shot. This is now loaded and primed, ready to go. Hopefully now the next three commands, so I shall just demonstrate by, by I will not fire just yet, but the next three commands will be hey, ready. Freeze, eh? And I shall fire. When I pull the trigger. A hard piece of steel held here in the jaws will strike the hammer. It's in the shower of sparks in that pan of gunpowder. Hopefully set that off. Hopefully ignite the main round. I say hopefully because this thing has a one in five misfire rate even on a good day. 
and they say that you have a 20% chance, especially if it's uh, not as great as day as this, but if it's rainy or windy, this thing will not go off. So if it does have a misfire, uh, be not surprised. It's very common to see. Try to imagine yourself as a Continental or a French soldier, and you're advancing under fire. You have cannons, musketry. The man next to you just got hit, but you keep advancing. And you can just see what the forces here we're up against. And just when you get near the wall, now you gotta scale the walls by going into this moat. And again, this redoubt was uh, manned by some of the uh, most well-trained soldiers in the British Army, the uh, Scottish Highlanders, who were fierce fighters. So now we're on the side of the redoubt and we're gonna go in and uh, see what it looks like from inside. Huh, that's pretty cool. So again, you have your earthworks and they would be held in place by this wood here. And you can kind of see the difference in terrain. This is a firing step. So, again, I'm in the center of the redoubt and then I'm going to step up on the firing step and talk about a clear field of fire. So as you can see, I'm standing up next to the redoubt and this thing is chest level. So all I have to do as a British regular is point my musket and shoot. And you have, remember the French were wearing white uniforms. They would have uh, stuck out like a sore thumb. The Americans, most of them were wearing blue. Some were wearing a mix match. But again, as a British soldier, what more could you ask for? You have, you have your protection here and it's just easy pickings. I'm just giving you an example of the thickness of some of the walls here. Now just imagine a solid cannonball hitting these uh, earthworks here. I mean, a lot of the energy is gonna be transferred into the ground around it, and you're not gonna do much damage. And even if you do do damage, these uh, earthworks are so easy to repair, unlike uh, brick or wooden fortresses. You know, when you think about it, it's hard to believe that one of the bloodiest battles during the American Revolution was in Savannah, Georgia. But then you see the fortifications and the uh, conditions that the American and French had to face, and then you understand it a little better. Um, this is really cool. Um, again, we're just in the middle of downtown Savannah, as you can see behind me. And uh, they have a really, really awesome tribute. And uh, seeing the actual remnants of the Spring Hill Redoubt was, was just awesome. And just learning that units from all over the, the world fought here. You had units from Scotland, Ireland, obviously England, Germany, the Americans. And uh, as we learned, Patience. Um, it's really cool and really humbling. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>